friends uh, let me introduce myself i am dr c s p rao working as a professor of mechanical engineering in national institute of technology warangal we have been working in this area for the last uh, say 15 to 28 20 years and uh, as a part of the computer integrated manufacturing uh, series lecture series is a part of e content development program i am going to discuss today the important topic of cam is computer aided process planning friends you know the design design is taken care by computer aided design now the manufacturing is being done by computer aided manufacturing and a very important link between the cad and the cam is process planning that is computer aided process planning always in any enterprise there are three very important uh, departments one is de design department second one is manufacturing department the interlinking between the two these two departments is planning department which is popularly known as production planning and control department the role of production planning and control department is to develop process plans for the designed components unless you develop process plans for the components the manufacturing people cannot understand what is this process planning process planning is nothing but what are the manufacturing steps that are to be taken in order to convert the design into manufacturing it consists of several things not only selecting the processes it consists of selection of machines selection of uh, tools selection of timings time standards several several other things and one more thing is there is no unique process plan process planning gives you several solutions a part which is designed in one way can have more than one process plan that means we can manufacture the component in more than one way but there has been always only one method which is very optimum optimum in the sense the method that gives you the best process sequences the best utility of resources the best manufacturing lead time it comprising of several best and the best that is the best process plan but in a conventional manufacturing unit the process plans done by man, human beings are varied numerously thus there is no unique solution for this and let us now discuss the various ways and means of the process planning and uh, how it is being modernized or automated which is known as automatic process planning or computer aided process planning let us have a detailed discussion on this in the coming uh, slide the 21st century engineering we are entering in its response to the world competition is concurrent engineering concurrent engineering requires the integration of all aspects of the product life cycle that is design manufacturing assembly distribution service disposal two important areas in the life cycle of a product are design and manufacturing process planning serves as an integration link between design and manufacturing process planning consists of preparing a set of instructions that describe how to fabricate a part or build an assembly which will satisfy engineering design specifications so let us now discuss the process planning in detail it involves 
describing detailed instructions that one uses to fabricate a part to specifications. The instructions include operation sequences or the processes, the tooling and uh, fixtures to be used, inspection methods to be used, gauges to be used and the, the graphical representations etc. Process planning is an act of preparing a detailed processing documentation for the manufacture of a piece part or an assembly. Systematic determination of the methods by which a product is to be manufactured in economically and competitively. These are all various ways that we can discuss the process plan. But we often confuse with uh, two words. One is process planning, the other one is production planning. In fact, the process planning is entirely different from the production planning. I'm going to give you those things here. Process planning is concerned with the engineering and technology issues of how to make the product and its parts, what type of equipment and tooling are to be used to fabricate the parts and assembly the product. Whereas production planning is concerned with the logistics issues of making the product, that is ordering the material, ordering the tools, obtaining the resources, requiring to make product in sufficient quantities should satisfy. It may be noted that always production is done only after the process planning. There are certain decisions included in the scope of process planning. That is interpretation of design drawings and the process planner should have the knowledge of processes and sequences and should have the knowledge of equipment selection and take a decision regarding that. And you should have the knowledge of tools, selection of tools, dies, molds, fixtures, gauges, and methods analysis, which include workpiece layout, small tools, hoist for lifts, heavy parts, hoist for lifting heavy parts, hand and body motions for manual operations, work standards, that is time standards for each operation, cutting tools, machining conditions and cutting conditions, etc. You see in this slide, it is a simply a operation sheet. We can call it as a process plan, a routing sheet, which indicates the operation codes, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, they are all operation codes, indicating 10 is saw to rough length, part is uh, a valve for main tank, and there has been given certain numbers and other things and material is uh, 1020 carbon steel and uh, the various description of the operations have been given and the machine to be used is 114 like that description of all the parts the 10 is the code of the operation we have to remember one thing that uh, you cannot go to the 20th operation that is facing without uh, completion of 10 so this is the sequence of operations indicates 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and uh, the machine on which what what are the type of machine and tooling and setup time and cycle time for the completion of this part everything is given this is a typical process plan sheet and this is a typical for this part only the process plan is given and uh, the process plan indicates the routing sheet previously shown and the drawing this is the drawing of the drawing and uh, scheduling is also a sheet which is also be done along with the process plan with all these details with the drawings of the part and the details of the root sheet and scheduling sheet and process plan sheet all of them put together will be sent to the manufacturing departments for the manufacturing people to follow the manufacturing steps to in order to realize the component so it is a, another typical process plan sheet uh, being used in this is more or less a standard one but uh, the the format could be different by the different uh, manufacturers these are the typical process plans being used in industry i'm going to i'm, I'm just showing them for our reference and better understanding if the process planner productivity significantly improves improved 
because process planning is one act uh, which is based upon completely the process planner's uh, view and his expertise and knowledge. Hence, if the process planning is done by one process planner, could be different from the another process planner. And his time is very, very important. If he could save his time, he would be able to spare his time, remaining part of the time on various other aspects in order to improve the productivity. He can spend more time on the methods, improvements and cost reduction analysis. Routings can be consistently optimized. Manufacturing instructions can be provided in greater detail. Pre-production lead times can be reduced. Responsiveness to engineering changes can be increased. And the development of process plans involves a number of activities. First is part print analysis, which is called as analysis of part requirement. Selection of the raw work part, that means the basic shape and size of the work pieces. Determining manufacturing operations and their sequences. Selection of machine tools. Selection of tools, work holding devices and inspection equipment. Determining machining conditions and manufacturing time. What is this analysis of part requirements? The part requirements can be defined as part features, process that is that includes the process determination steps of processes. Dimensions it will take additions regarding the selection of machine tool size. Tolerance specifications. The capability of machine tools can be selected based upon the tolerance specifications. And the CNC code generations, etc. And selection of raw workpiece. It involves such attributes as basic shape of the workpiece. You can have standard materials, whether it is a rod or a slab or a blank or a profile and the dimensions. Pre-shaped, sometimes pre-shaped materials, cast parts, forged parts, extruded parts like that. Size of the workpiece, basic uh, raw material and size of the machine tool, size on which this workpiece is, is capable of uh, holding it and material conditions, tool selections, the things. Determining manufacturing options and their sequences. Selection of the processes like availability, accuracy and requirement, suitability and cost. Sequence of operations. There are several operations. What operation is to be done first? What operation is to be done next? Work holding methods. How best you have to work hold the methods so that maximum number of processes can be done on the given work piece without change of setup. Cutting tools, availability cost of the cutting tools. You can do the operation with the least cost tools and you can do the operations with the more costier tools also. So all these things depends upon the process plan and how he select it. And in which very important thing is selection of machine tools. Workpiece related attributes like part features and dimensions, dimensional tolerances, raw materials form. Machine tool related attributes which includes process capability, size of the machine, uh, mode of operation, manual, semi-automatic or automatic, CNC, if it is a CNC machine, CNC tooling capabilities, type of tool, size of tool, tool changing capability, manual or automatic, production volume retail related information is also required, production quantity, order frequency. You take here, there are several drilling operations shown here which can be done on a drilling machine or a universal milling machine or a machining center CNC machining center you see here there are it is a drilling operation this is a core drilling operation this is a step drilling operation this is a counter boring operation and this is a counter sinking operation and reaming operation and center drilling operation and gun drilling or deep hole drilling operations all these operations can be done on a drilling machine and we move, uh, the process planner should select the operation and select the tool for that operation and uh, for example reaming cannot be done without drilling so he has to select uh, first uh, a drill to drill a hole 
and then rim reamer to rim the hole and then if it's a tapping is to be done in the drilled hole after that only after reaming operation only the tapping can be done like that drilling reaming and tapping must be done sequentially you cannot do the reaming operation first then drilling operation next like that so this sequence selection of sequence of steps is a process plan you take similarly turning operation there are several operations that can be done on lathe machines it's a simple turning operation and uh, you can see this is a uh, operation orthogonal cutting operation and the tapering operation profile turning operation grooving operation facing operation face grooving operation form cutting operation boring operation drilling operation and several operations like parting threading knurling all these operations can be done on lathe machines so you have to you have to select the machine and the select the process next and select the tool also for that operation these are the milling operations some of the milling operations and you have select the cutter as well so face milling operations you have to you have to use face face milling cutters and partial face milling operation and uh, this is end milling operation profile milling operation and pocket milling operation these are all the contouring milling operations there are several milling operations can be done on milling machine like face milling operation partial face milling operation end milling operation profile milling operation pocket milling operation contour milling operations so the respective cutters can also be selected all these operations can be done on machine milling machine so selection of machine milling machine and on that selection of process must be done and selection of cutter must be done so all these things have to be planned and uh, sometimes we have several lathe machines are available what lathe machine must be taken must be selected so evaluation of machine tool alternatives this can be done by machine tool capability machine tool capability which is also called as process capability so process capability has to be evaluated for all the machine tools that are having that are available on the shop floor so machine tool capability or the process capability can be done by statistical tests you can see that after machining several components let us say 100 200 components in the universe same universe of discourse and uh, if you take the mean size and the deviations of that plot them as a normal graph and you can see the deviations in plus or minus 3 sigma levels and accordingly you can calculate sigma which is called as uh, standard deviation as under root uh, sigma x minus x bar whole square divided by n minus 1 uh, where n is sample size or sigma is equal to r by d2 machine capability can be can be calculated as six sigma by tolerance percentage means multiplied by 100 machine capability less than 100 is capability is good machine capability more than 100 percent it is not acceptable so you must have to select the machine tool which is acceptable machine tool capability and process capability are inverse parameters so process capability is one by machine tool capability and process capability is nothing but tolerance divided by six sigma and uh, process capability is more than one means process is acceptable and uh, if the process capability is more than one if you have a choice of machine tools we have to see the process capability is high that kind of machine tool must be selected and sometimes you can also select a machine tool based upon the unit cost of product it is again a statistical test only the distribution and size of finished parts are assumed to be normal it can be done only by conducting some tests some statistical tests, tests and the results are available on the shop floor and uh, the process planner should have these details before they start process planning activity so they know the process capabilities and the cost of part being produced on a specific machine tool all the things so this is done by where ZU and ZL are the standard normal variates for upper and lower tolerance limits TU and TL are upper lower tolerance limits and mu is me mean of the population and sigma is standard deviation and the portion of acceptable parts EAP can be calculated as phi of Z of U minus phi of Z of L 
pair phi of z of u is the probability of parts having dimension less than the upper tolerance value and phi of z of l is the probability of parts having dimension less than the lower tolerance value. So, this is a typical process capability study and the how to calculate portion of acceptable parts. These are all already available and this data is very much required for the process planner. Then the selection of tools, work holding devices and inspection equipment. Tools, we have to select based upon the tool material, shape, size, nose radius, tolerance. So suppose if it is a, a single point tool, we have to select the tool parameters also because the kind of tool signature or tool nomenclature that is required for a typical for processing of one kind of tool material could be quite different from the other kind of tool materials. For example, if you hold in a brass or copper, the point angle is less, okay, it is sharp compared to drill a steel plate. So like that the tool parameters or the tool signatures or the tool nomenclatures could be different. So we must have to sell the tool material and tool nomenclature as well depending upon the kind of work piece which you are selecting for which you are selecting the machining process. Work holding devices. The primary purpose of a work holding device is to position the work piece accurately and hold it securely. Manually operated devices. They are collets, chucks, mandrel, face plates. Design devices. Power chucks, specially designed fixers and jigs. Flexible fixers used in flexible manufacturing systems like pilots and other things. Inspection equipment, online inspection equipment and offline inspection equipment. And your, the planner also selects the cutting conditions and the manufacturing times. That is machining conditions. Machining conditions includes what is the cutting speed, what is the cutting feed, what is the depth of the cut you will select for one typical operation. So object is to set the cutting conditions in such a way that the economical, economically but best production state is achieved. That means the cost of machining must be high, must be less and the cost of um, the quality of product must be very good. What is the economically best production state? It is one, minimum production cost to maximum production rate both indicates the same. Uh, you, sometimes you have to choose the feed as feed, low feed or high feed. Low feed is finishing cut and high feed is normally a roughing cut operation. You go for high feed. High feed gives you more productivity, more metal removal, thereby more production rate. And uh, feed rate is not effective as cutting speed for, for to life. And therefore, feed should be set to maximum possible value. This is, called, this is called as golden thumb rule of metal cutting. You must have to choose as, fee, as high feed as possible in rough cutting operation. Limitations are maximum tool force that the machine or the tool can stand and maximum power available. Choice of cutting speeds. You can select high speed or low speed. High speed will give you low tool life high tool cost, high production rate, shorter production time, low speed, high tool life, low tool cost, low production rate, long production time and sometimes you can also calculate minimum cost per piece. Minimum cost per piece can be calculated as some of the non-productive cost plus machining cost plus tool changing cost plus tooling cost. So this is a popular equation which is available in any of the metal cutting test books. So and particularly I prefer uh, machine tools by uh, Jeffrey Bothride. He has discussed all these things in detail. Cu is equal to C0 T1 plus C0 Tc plus Co Td Tc by T plus Ct Tc by T. So the other parameters have been given here. We can calculate the total cost of the component by this. For a single cutting, single pass turning operation, Tc is equal to pi ld by vf. We know the Taylor's equation for tool life vt power n is equal to c. 
where v is cutting speed and t is tool life, n is stylus exponent and c is cutting speed for one minute of tool life. Combining the above equations, one can get the cost per piece equation like this. This equation can be further optimized. Differentiating this equation with respect to cutting speed and equating to zero, then solving the cutting speed will give you the cutting for minimum production cost. And similarly, maximum production rate uh, Tu is equal to non-productive time plus machining time plus tool changing time and Tu can be calculated by this equation and this is again by the differentiating Tu with respect to V and equating it to zero then solving for V will give you the cutting speed for maximum production rate. This is the cutting speed for maximum cutting production rate and afterwards manufacturing lead time can be studied uh, can be calculated as lead time is equal to S plus Tu plus uh, Tu multiplied by Q. Q is uh, Lot size Tu is equal to production time per piece and S is equal to major setup time. If you know these things, we can calculate the, the, these machining parameters and uh, you can select the cutting speeds, you can select the cutting feeds and uh, accordingly lead time also can be calculated. And uh, here is a small example given here uh, to get uh, much more um, clarity of the topic. A lot of 500 units of steel rods of 30 centimeters long and 6 centimeters in diameter is turned on a lathe machine at feed rate of 0.2 mm per revolution and depth of cut is 1 mm. The tool life is given by this equation. The other relevant data has been given it here and we were asked to determine optimum tool life and optimum cutting speed to minimize the cost, optimum tool life and optimum cutting speed to maximize the production rate minimum cost per component, time per component and corresponding lead life, lead time, uh, maximum production rate, uh, corresponding cost per component and lead time. And you can calculate uh, the relevant uh, parameters which were given uh, in the previous equations using uh, the values given in this problem as uh, C0 you can calculate it and it we got it as 0 0.25 dollars per minute CT is equal to 5.16 dollar per edge and the T minimum we got it as 84.56 minutes and V minimum is, we got it as 82.3 meters per minute and T maximum is 2 minutes and V maximum is 174.1 meters per minute and minimum cost TC is equal to 3.4 dollars per piece and uh, CU is we got it as 1.2 dollars per piece and time per component can also be calculated and uh, maximum production rate is calculated as 1.62 minutes per minute piece and production time per piece is calculated and uh, cost for maximum production rate is calculated as 4.82 dollars per piece and uh, we know after this example we can easily conclude that we can select the speeds and feeds in such a way based upon your body what we want. Suppose we wanted to have higher feeds, the cost of production part is to be minimized, the speeds and feeds are selected. If we wanted to have maximum production rate, the speeds and feeds are to be selected differently and tools are selected to differently. So based upon this machining knowledge, the process planner should select the optimum speeds and feeds and depth of the cuts based upon the tool and workpiece combinations. Now, what are the various process planning approaches that are normally adopted here? One which is being adopted anciently is manual or experience based process planning method. Even today it is popularly used. Computer, second one is computer aided process planning method. Let us discuss these things. Manually method or experience based process planning method. This method is most widely used method but it is time consuming because it is completely depends upon the human planner and his knowledge and his experience. And it leads to give inconsistent plans. Today if I am the process planner, if I do the process planning activity today, it, it would be like something. And if I do it after a after few days, I could do another process plan. 
both process plans are correct in all aspects. If you adopt this process plan or that process plan give you the best component. But the sequence of steps and other things followed in one, one plan would be different from the other plan. So most inconsistency, this activity is a most inconsistency. This can be, you can have only one kind of uh, process plan if the part is so simple. If the part is complex, that means many number of uh, machining features are there on the part, then if we can say that the complexity of the part is increasing. And if the part is complex enough, then we may have to have more than one process plan. That means more than one plan can be generated, can be written. That's why in, in manually experienced based process planning system, we'll have inconsistency in plans. It requires highly skilled and knowledgeable persons. It all depends upon the experience of the process planner and his knowledge base. Manual approach to process planning. Its use is still very widely spread in small to medium sized companies, especially in the aerospace industry. It involves subjective judgments reflecting the personal preferences and experiences. Plans prepared by different planners for similar parts are usually not identical. Very labor intensive, like 40% of tasks, involves preparation of documentation. Process planning activities in a schematic way is like this. Analyze the part requirements, determine operation sequence, and select the equipment, and calculate processing time. And uh, this is an iterative procedure. Calculate processing time if this is more or less. Again, select new equipment like that, and decide the equipment, and then document the process plan, and communicate the process plan to the shop floor people. Factors affecting the process planning activity are volume of production, the skills and expertise of manpower, delivery dates, the schedules, material specifications, accuracy and process capabilities of machines, accuracy requirements of parts and products. Because of these variations, we need to go for automating the process planning activity. Can we do the process planning activity, computerized or computer augmented process planning activity? Yes, it is. It is required to develop computer aided process planning or automatic process planning in order to have consistency in process plans and to reduce redundancy in process plans, to reduce time of preparation of process plans, we need to go for automated process planning activity. Particularly in the age of computer integrated manufacturing, we don't have any other option except to computer aided process plan in order to link the computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing departments. Process planning provides the link between CAD and CAM. Process planning function converts engineering designs into fabrication instructions. Thus, automated process planning is key to integrate CAD-CAM, of course, the computer integrated manufacturing. Without automated process planning, CIM would not be possible or would be impossible. Both uh, group technology and computer-aided process planning are two essential elements of CAD-CAM integration. We already discussed what is called as group technology, and the group technology provides a basis and methodology for uh, D and M design and manufacturing communications, whereas automated process planning uh, provides a means uh, to facilitate this common communication and remove the wall between the design and engineering. SIM cannot occur until the process is uh, automated. Consequently, automated process planning is the link between CAD and CAM. You can see this through this diagram. The need of CAB, the shop trained people who are familiar with the details of machining and other processes are gradually retiring. The expertise, experienced the process planners are gradually uh, retiring and uh, there is a gap, a tremendous gap of knowledgeable uh, people are not there much uh, and depending upon them is also very difficult. 
and several other uh, options uh, as we have discussed already we have to go for automated process planning because of the need there are certain potential benefits of the automated process planning which includes 50% increase in process planning productivity 40% increase in in capacity of existing equipment 25% reduction in setup cost 12% reduction in tooling 10% reduction in scrap and rework 10% reduction in shop floor labor 6% reduction in work in process 4% reduction in materials other benefits include process rationalization and standardization cap leads to more logical and consistent process plans lower manufacturing cost and higher quality increased productivity of process planners more work to be accomplished reduce lead time for process planning improved legitimacy computer prepared route sheet are neater and easy to read incorporation of other application programs cap can be interfaced with cost est estimation and work standards in a typical industrial situation how the process planning activity is done is let us say computer aided process planning activity is done this is the cad for this the design is this this design information is available here and this design information in order to manufacture this component we need to write a generator the cnc part this is the cutter path part code is need, need to be generated and it can be done by human beings or it can be done by by cnc if you prepare cnc program so again we ask why to automate process planning shorter lead times manufacturability feedback lowering the production cost consistent uh, process plan in this slide you see the design information is converted into manufacturing features that is for this we need to do workpiece selection process selection tool selection feed selection operation sequence selection setup planning fixer planning and pot programming how to do the cap computer aided process planning how to achieve there are two varieties cap can be done in two ways or two approaches are there one is called as retrieval or variant computer aided process planning system the other one is called as generative computer aided process planning system sometimes the two systems combine and known as semi generative computer aided process planning let us see what is this variant process planning approach this variant process planning approach is a group technology based approach it is based on group technology and process pcc dependent on good data mining and search engines variant cap system requires a database containing standard process plans a standard process plan is stored in computer files for each part code the standards are based on current part routines in use in the factory or an ideal plan prepared for each family system has provisions for editing a particular standard plan to accommodate product variation in the variant uh, cap method process planning is developed for a master part or composite part which represents a common features of uh, of a given part family in the variant cap method process plan is developed for a master part master part is one which is having common features of a family of parts suppose if you have several parts of a family all the features of these parts they must component have so if a master component he has got one feature that ca that feature must be present in one of the parts of that particular family a process plan for a new part is created by recalling or identifying and retrieving an existing plan just by doing some editing operation of the existing process plan we can generate the process plan for the new part and we can do certain modifications for the new parts and we can again store the new part process plan against the gt code to use method 
efficiently parts classification coding system must be used. So we need to have a very good parts classification and coding system in order to have very good uh, variant uh, cap system. So in a nutshell the entire schema of uh, the retrieval cap system or variant cap system is presented here in which a new part design for which uh, we need to download the process code. For that uh, first of all when the part design comes we need to derive the GT code group technology code and against the group technology code search for the part family file containing the GT code. So we need to have a part family file in which the GT code is searched. Retrieve if the, if the same if the plan is existing the same GT code you retrieve that or retrieve the nearest code nearest code that means nearest part process plan of a part is to be retrieved and do the editing operation edit the existing plan or write the new plan so which is easy because only few features are different so edit the process plan and develop a new process plan and step put put them in in the order and the process plan format the process plan format uh, prepare the other application programs so part family file is required standard process plan is required, plan file is required and the coding system is required and the preparing preparation of uh, standard process plans for part families is also re required so these are all in order to develop a cap system these are the preparatory st stages like selecting code system and prepare standard process plans for the part families suppose you are going to develop a variant system which is suitable for few fa part family for all those part family parts uh, you need to develop uh, the gt codes and their respective process plans and store them this is a preparatory kind of uh, study you have to do it before you start working for the new part program new process in order to develop uh, the process plan for a new part you need to do these preparatory stages cap system again gt code to form part families and uh, create standard process plans for, for this uh, family and store them in, in a database and process planner code and uh, classify new process new part into the family and retrieve the standard plans like that and the data files that are required is steps in the preparatory phases are selecting the appropriate classification and coding system for the company forming part families for uh, the parts produced by the company preparing uh, standard process plans and uh, uh, you have to repeat the above two and three steps uh, as new parts are designed and added uh, to the company's database capacity to alter an existing process plan plan you can see this table containing variant different variant process planning systems that are available in the literature and that are available some of them are available in the commercially also cut plan cap com cap d class intellicap make cap these are the systems and the company that is developed and uh, decision logic are the function that are based uh, you have given in this slide this slide is a self explanatory let us discuss the advantages of retrieval cap system once the standard plan has been written a variety of parts can be planned comparatively simple programming and uh, installation is required to implement a planning system efficient processing and uh, evaluation of complicated activities and decisions thus reducing time and labor requirement standardized process procedures by structuring manufacturing knowledge of process planners to company needs lower development and hardware costs shorter development times efficient processing and evaluation of complicated activities and decisions thus reducing time and uh, labor requirements standardized procedures by sh by structuring manufacturing knowledge as a process planners to the company needs lower development and hardware costs short development times disadvantage of variant process planning system maintaining consistency in editing is difficult it is difficult to adequately accommodate various combinations of material geometry size precision quality alternate process sequences machine loading 
etc. The quality of final process plan generated depends on to a large extent on the knowledge and the experience of the process planner. The system is understandable. The planner has control of final plan. It is easy to learn and easy to use. Drawbacks are the components to be planned are limited to similar components previously planned. Maintaining consistency in editing is difficult. Experienced process planners are still required to modify the standard plan for a specific component. Now let us discuss the generative computer-aided process planning system. An automated computerized system is used to generate each individual process plan automatically without reference to prior plan. It is an automated computerized system used to generate each individual process plan. It does not take the database of the process plans and edit them like variant. Any part for which uh, you need to develop the process plan, it starts from the scratch. So process planning is done automatically without reference to prior plan. The system consists of decision logic, formula, technological algorithms and geometry based data. The computer automatically generates a unique operation and root sheet whenever a part is ordered. Instead of retrieving and editing an existing plan containing in a computer database, it creates the process plan based on logical procedure. The process sequence is planned without human assistance and without a set of predefined standard plans. Expert systems and artificial intelligence algorithms have been used to develop generated process plans. Expert system is a computer program that is capable of solving complex problems that normally require a human with ear of education and experience. First ingredient, the technical knowledge of manufacturing and the logic used by successful process planners must be captured and coded into computer program. Knowledge and the logic of human process planner knowledge base is developed. The generator system then uses that knowledge base to solve process planning problems. Second ingredient for generative cap is computer compatible description of part is to be produced. Pertinent data and information needed for the plan. The process sequence two ways is geometrical model like CAD or GT code. Third ingredient is capability to apply the process knowledge and the planning logic contained in the knowledge base to a given part description. CAP uses its knowledge base to solve specific problem. Planning the process for a new part like inference engine. By using knowledge base and uh, IE, it synthesizes a new process plan from scratch for uh, each new part it is presented. You see some of the generative process planners that are developed and available today have been listed out in this slide. You can see E indicates that is experimental, C indicates commercial and uh, the part data input is G indicates geometrical, D is indicates design. You can give input as design and decision logic is by means of decision trees are used in uh, APAS, APPAS, APAS, which was developed by Arya Visk in Aachen University in Germany and uh, this is used uh, decision tree and uh, it is used for H kind of shapes means uh, the holes and R for rotational parts, B for rotational and non-rotational parts like that the details are, have been given in this uh, all uh, commercial and C and this table gives only information about the availability of uh, the process planning attempts, generative process planning attempts or systems limited to certain type of parts only like rotational parts and hole making operations and certain things like that. But there is no unique generative process planning system developed so far 
which can address the problems of prismatic parts as well as rotational parts. However, the study on generative process planning is still continuing. The structure of a generative process planning is like this. Let us say start or a new part, component representation module. You can develop the component representation, that means input to this, by means of the geometry means CAD. You can use the computer aided design details, which consists of geometrical details. Or sometimes you can give the part geometry creation also. You can create uh, in, in a uh, user defined way. You can create uh, the geometrical uh, details and give it as an input to this. And if it is in a old part, uh, copy existing part or geometry file to the geometric file and do editing and the editing module is there. And once that is Vava, the operation extraction is done by the sequencing module. And operation extraction, intermediate process, dimension computation, and operation sequencing. These operation sequencing algorithms are required here, which uh, gives you prioritize the operations and sequence their operations. And selection of the machine tool is to be done. Machine tool selection module is available. So a huge database of machines, machine tools availability and machinability conditions that are available on the shop floor must be available in the form of a database and uh, the database will be taken care, will be interacted with this module and uh, the, the data necessary data will be extracted from the database. Standard time and cost computation module we have to have a library of standard times for all the things to in order to calculate the machining times cost calculations etc and then report generation module editing modification and printing and the process plan is ready components of the generative computer aided process planning consists of the description component characteristics geometric features dimensions tolerances and surface conditions a subsystem to define machine parameters a subsystem to select and sequence individual operations a database of available machines and tooling a report generator. Let us just discuss the generative cap system in the form of steps. First step is input engineering specifications into the cap system. That is part features which can be given like you know geometrical features, tolerances, sizes, locations, etc. Uh, sometimes their coded information is stored as raw data in computer. Also describe the part in its rough state it should be given as input. Ideal engineering specifications should be captured directly from CAD file and uh, the current research is also that uh, the CAD file is given as a direct uh, input to the CAP module and uh, CAD file the input uh, may be in the form of uh, .dxf files or PDES files or step files the information is to be given as input to the CAP module. Step 2, generate programs to transform coded data and textual information into a detailed process plan. Whatever the coded information is there or textual information that will be converted and process plan is generated. This requires complex algorithms and large databases to accomplish. Algorithms for sequence prioritization, algorithms for process selection, algorithms for machine tool selections, all of them are here included there will be integration with the databases uh, it works with this uh, reading the input file and understanding it uh, selecting the features selecting the machining process suitable to the features and prioritize the machining process and uh, select the machine tools for the each machining process and uh, machine tool type uh, and uh, number of the machine tool from the database and selection of the speeds and fields from the database, tools for the to machine the features, selecting all of them together and then listing them and then printing them in the form of a, a process plan. No universal generative process plan consists. There are some for special classes of parts with limited geometrical features. I would like to give an example process plan system which is called as computer managed process planning CMPP 
which was developed in United Technologies Research Center. And it's a commercially capable of automatically making process plan decisions with interactive capabilities. Interactive capability facilitates the user to examine and modify a process plans as it is developed. Developed specifically for machined cylindrical parts. The CMPP system is like this. Interactive input, design system input, uh, different part model and part design file is created and uh, process uh, decision model file is created. Planning logic is given and defined manufacturing logic through which process decision mo mo model file is created and machine data and uh, defined uh, manufacturing resources uh, machine data file is created and perform planning functions. There, this is all given as input to the another subsystem of um, uh, perform planning functions to generate the process plan. First, the databases containing specific information about the available machine tools, stock removal allowances for cutting materials, types of cuts, tolerance, machinability, process decisions, process decision module, must be developed. Manufacturing logic and resources for a particular form should be developed. PDM technique is used to define local manufacturing rules. Rules defined by the use of COPPL computer process planning language you can use. It requires raw material, geometry, dimensions, final part shape, tolerances, surface finish, geometric form conditions, material specification, surface treatment. CMPP process planning functions are shown in this schematic in which generate sequence of operations first from the part design data then determine the references surfaces and calculate dimension tolerances and machine tool data and produce process plan documents. For each operation, operation number, description, type of machine, orientation, of the workpiece on the machine, surfaces cut and heat treatment are given. Dimensioning reference surfaces for each cut in each operation is, is, is defined. And machining dimensions, tolerances, stock removal for each surface cut in each operation is to be given. A printed summary of operations, a printed tolerance analysis, a dimension workpiece sketches for each machining operation is available. Now let us compare the two methods we have discussed so far. The two methods are variant process planning systems and generated process planning system. When you compare with respect to coding system, that means the computer programming, with respect to coding, where the generated system is very detailed, variant system for part geometry is, is complicated and if you have huge number of part families, and uh, if you have a, a, a composite part, a complicated composite part, then a variant is better. With respect to part geometry, variant is complicated, whereas generative is simple. Similarity between the family of components is very high because if the part family, it is take, retrieved from the part families, hence the similarity of part component is very very high. If it is dissimilar, variant will fail. Whereas generative is best suited for dissimilarity of the component. That means it is generated for any component, any time. That means it generate the process plan from the scratch. So similarity between the family of components is very low. Family size, variant approach is very much used. When you have large families of very few, very few families. Whereas Generated system family size is small and number of families can be more. Databases, a large database is, is, is having because it need to search for a lot of group technology codes and the database requirement is small, small, small databases only here. Investment and effort is high because a lot of pre-processing is required for the variant process planning whereas maybe low or sometimes is also high. Time to develop is very short for variant approach whereas time to develop generated system is very long because of the
programming complexities. Human intervention is required, is very highly required for variant process plans because at each time after retrieval you, are, you need to do editing operations. So for editing human intervention, human intervention is required, whereas human intervention is very smallly, very required is very small here. Now let us discuss how to select a CAP system. The first point is to classification and coding capability. Classification and coding, ability to change the part attributes if you have process planning, retrieval capabilities would be very high. Second one is graphics capabilities. CAD database management, if it is based upon that, you can select either one of these methods. And uh, third one is work instructions creation and maintenance, like word processing, text information, graphic storage, editing, global update, online help, form generation, automatic revision, uh, uh, history, and process planning capabilities, variant, uh, generative, hybrid, uh, or part family identification, capture knowledge of uh, process parameters, selection of tools, time standard capabilities, calculation of standards, access to other vendors, standard time modules, and machining parameters, selection of speed, feed, determination of stock removal. These are all the parameters that you select for the process plan. And total system considerations like hardware requirement, database management capabilities, interface to other software systems, MRP, uh, system cost, ease of um, use, future enhancement, vendor specifications. Selecting a process plan means define the objectives for CAP system, capturing manufacturing expertise and make available plan point. Reduce manual input to in process planning. Facilitate integration of CAD and CAM. Develop optimum and consistent process plans. Specify criteria of CAP system, classification coding capabilities, graphic capabilities, process planning features, work instructions, time standards, and other things. Based on this information, we can select the process planning system, available process planning system. You can represent the product or the presentation as geometrical information, part shape, design features, technological information, tolerancing, surface quality, specific manufacturing nodes, feature information, manufacturing features. And uh, this knowledge of the entire processes can be presented in the form of uh, predicate logics and production rules, semantic nets, uh, frames, object-oriented programming. All these things are being used in CAP, system, in, uh, CAP programming things uh, and uh, we need to do a lot of thing, a lot of uh, discussion in order to know that. So I'm not going into deep of uh, these logic rules and other things, how to develop the process plan. We have only discussed uh, how, what are the various uh, process plans, but not how to develop the process plan. In this slide, uh, some automated uh, process planning efforts have been listed out. It's a self-explanatory, we can read it on, on your own. And the developments of CAP, if you observe that uh, from 1960 onwards, so several attempts were uh, done and uh, up to 2000 still uh, the work is go going on. Till uh, today, we did not have a unique uh, CAP system that can address all sort of problems, computer problems. But today we have highly automated systems with a lot of uh, intelligent and decision making algorithms are imbibed in, in these systems. They can uh, or retrieve and uh, certain attributions, attributes can be taken into decision logics and the decision making algorithms are available and with all that an expert uh, some of the systems uh, they give process planning uh, as an output but then a lot of research is still needed to be done and whatever is achieved is achieved to the great extent only and a lot of work is still concentrating particularly on the graphics interfaces and also on the intelligent algorithm, role of intelligent algorithm, on optimization algorithms, etc. Friends, with this, uh, I would like to conclude the discussion on computer-aided process planning. We have discussed uh, the computer-aided process planning uh, limited to the classwork uh, knowledge only. I have not discussed uh, the in detail and the uh, the works which are going on in uh, particularly in uh, computer-aided process planning. 
there are several works even NIT Warangal we are doing uh, particular in the in uh, uh, using uh, steps databases etc we are you we are developing uh, several algorithms also several genetic algorithms and other fuzzy logic algorithms so we have used to identify the features in the, based upon the feature feature selection for the process plan generation such kind of works have been done using decision logics and predicate logics etc but we have not discussed all of them here but friends as a whole we have discussed the importance of process planning and then the types of process planning and the need and uh, importance of the computer aided process planning and what type of process plannings are available like variant system and uh, generator system if it is a variant system what kind of uh, knowledge is required to develop the variant system and if it is a generator system what kind of knowledge is required to develop in, in generator systems we have also discussed uh, with CMPP as an example and with this uh, I thank you for all uh, for your patient uh, listening uh, the topic and a lot of uh, we can discuss this elaborately also thank you for your uh, patient uh, listening thanks for the opportunity thank you very much